Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses, I'll begin from 17. Usual verse. You're going to give me the Amplified of that. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and 17. The Bible says, if any person, somebody say any person, if any person, tell your neighbor, if any person, any man is in Christ or is engrafted in Christ. The Bible says, he is a new creation. Somebody shout hallelujah. For any man, if any man, whether he's the worst person the world has ever seen, whether he's the worst news, whether he has made the worst mistake in the world, or the worst sin recorded in scripture, the Bible says if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, the Bible says he's a new creation, a new creature altogether. And he says, and the old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. And the Bible says, behold, the fresh and new one has come. Somebody say, I'm fresh and new. Amen. And the next verse says, but all things are from God. All things are from God. Who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. Received us into favor. Brought us into harmony with himself and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The KJV says, if any man be in Christ, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And the next verse says, and all things are of God. All things are of God. The Bible says all things are of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor if a man is born again. If a man is born of God. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold the new. And all things are of God. God. All things are of God. Today I will start to put you to remembrance of things you read every day, but some of us have not fully understood. And tonight, by God, give me utterance to articulate the conviction of my heart as I ought to, to give understanding to somebody, to help somebody. To help somebody. To help somebody. We live in a world that is full of trouble. We live in a world that is full of turmoil. We live in a world that is full of pain. We live in a world that is full of confusion. We live in a world that is full of bad news. We live in a world that is full of disorganization. We live in a world that is full of death. We live in a world that is full of destruction. We live in a world that is full of the passing of everything. It's almost as though everything you see is temporal. You understand what I'm saying? Even your body. Even the clothes you're putting on. Bible tells us for the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. 
And because of those things, we tend to be so limited in our understanding. And then we go back to losing the picture of how God views us and how he expects us to think and live in this world. Galatians chapter 6 verses 15, he says, For neither is circumcision or uncircumcision availeth anything, but a new creature. Hallelujah. Neither what you do or what you don't do is important, but primarily what God is doing, the new creature. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give me the message of that. The message version says that, can't you see that the central issue in all this is not what you and I do, that is submit to circumcision or reject circumcision. It is what God is doing. And he is creating something totally new. And what has he called it? A free life. Somebody say I'm free. free. Say I'm free. So God is telling you and I that what's important now in this dispensation, the truth that he wills not you to leave or ignore or to put far, the one thing he implores you to venture every time you wake up in the morning is the understanding of the new creation that you are in Christ. All things are passed away. Your old nature is passed away. And all things, the Bible says, are of God. All things are of God. Let me go a bit deeper. The Bible says in John 17 verses 14. When Jesus was praying. I want you to give me the amplified. When Jesus was praying for you and I. Before he went. He says I have given and delivered to them your word. The message and the world has hated them. Why? Because they are not of the world. Yes they are present. On us. But they are not of us. They are not of cosmos. Hallelujah somebody. That is why he gave them the word. Because he could. Anybody or anything that is not after this nature. Cannot receive the word. For the carnal man cannot receive neither design the things of the spirit. For they are spiritually designed. A man who is not born again cannot understand what we are talking about. Salvation is, let me tell you, you need to be crazy to be here. Some of you think you're you're, you're normal to the world, but you're not normal already. The things you're doing are too crazy. Are you hearing me, somebody? That the way you live is too crazy for people to believe that you, 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 you you are off them. He says, the natural man receives not the things of the spirit, nor for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. The, this man, the physical earthly man, is earthly. Now Jesus is praying in John. He says, I have delivered unto them your word, the message. And the world has hated them. Why? Because they are not of the world. They do not belong to the world. Just as I am not of the world. Woo! Tell somebody I don't belong to this world. Tell somebody I don't belong to this world. Let me tell you why you shouldn't or you don't belong to this world. 1 John chapter 5 and 19. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we know that we are of God. Somebody say I know that I'm of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. I can't be wicked. Give me the amplified of that. He says, and, and we know positively that we are of God and the whole world around us, the cosmos, is under the power, the Bible says, of the evil one. Do you know why now you're not of the world? Because you're not under the power of Satan. You're not under the power of death. You're not under the power of failure. You're not under the power of fear. You're not under the power of sickness. You're not under the power of words. You're not under the power. You're not under his, That's why you're not of this world. Because the whole world is under the power of Satan. You're present on earth, but you're not under the power of Satan. 
I don't know whether you understand how what I'm talking about. Yes, you're walking the face of this earth, but you're not subject to the elements of this earth. You're not subject to the diseases of this earth. You're not subject to the words of this earth. You're not subject to the struggle of this earth. You're not subject to the corruption of this earth. You're not subject to the turmoil of this earth. You're not subject to the testations of this earth. You're not subject to the weakness of the earth. That's why he gave you the word. He gave you the word. He said, if you ever find trouble, there it is. It will remind you who you are. If you ever go through a situation and you don't know how to go through, it's here. Read it. He sent his word and healed your diseases. The Bible says he sent a word to Jacob and it leads the whole of Israel. This word is there to remind you that you're not of this world. You look like them, but you're not them. You talk like them, but you're not them. You laugh with them, but you're not them. You even cry with some, but you're not them. And it has to sink in your head that no matter what you do, never forget that you are not of this world. I'm not under the power of the evil one. Hallelujah. Satan has no power over you. The devil has no power over you. Did you just hear what I just said? The devil has no power over you. He has power over those of this world. But we know who we are. Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. I know who I am. It doesn't matter how the world calls it. God has a name for it. Ay, ay, ay. It doesn't matter how the world terms it. God has a name for it. It doesn't matter what science calls it. God has a name for it. It doesn't matter what politics calls it. God has a name for it. It doesn't matter how the social system calls it. God has a name for it. Because he was given a name. Oh, above all names. That at the sound of that name, every knee, every, 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 every knee bows. And every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of the Father. Tell somebody I have a name. I have a name. Yes, you're going through things, yes. But you have a name. He says, I will not leave you. I will never forsake you. I will not abandon you like orphans. You have the life. You have the spirit. Oh, yeah, man, those are. The only question is, do you believe? It's not what is in the world. It's not what they say. The question is, do you believe? Because if you fail while believing, then he is a liar. There's a question on his sovereignty. A polarization of his majesty. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Has the word worked for anybody that you know? Is there anybody on the face of the earth the word has worked for? then it can surely work for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. If it has worked for somebody, then it can surely work for you. I'm not of this world. Tell somebody I'm not of this world. I am not of this world. (laughs) <laughs> Glory to God. I'm not of this world. I'm not subject to the power of Satan. I'm not subject to the evil one. I'm not. I'm not. Say it. I'm not. I am not. I am not. I am not. Yes, let it hit those ones of the world. But not me. Not me. I'm not under. I'm not under. And if you're not under, where are you? Come on. Where are you? Where are you? You're above bad news. You're above any sickness. Any. Above.
above any sickness, any trial, any turmoil, any pain, any discomfort, any news. You are above. You are above. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. are. I'll say it again. You are. You are. And you must believe it. You must live here and enter here. You are. You are. That's the peace. He says that shall come and garrison your heart in Christ. Your heart and mind in Christ. That's the peace you have. That even when everything is falling away, you still have something in you telling you, uh-uh. Mm, I'm different. I'm a d- different kind. I'm on a, of a different breed. I carry a different seed. Somebody thank God for his word. That is why I don't understand how a Christian cannot, does not attend to the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Read the Bible. Listen to sermons constantly. Don't get them out. Hallelujah. Because when Jesus says, I gave them the message because they are not of the world. That's why he gave them the message. He knew it was the only thing to bail us out. There is no nothing that can bail you out of your situation except the word he left you. Because he can bank on it. The Bible has been the top selling book since it was printed. It can't be a lie. Hallelujah. We hold on to the word. On Sunday I was sharing with saints and I told them like the Bible says in Hebrews I think too. He says seeing that these things are true. For if he says the Bible says if these things. He says give me the amplified of that. The amplified says since all this is true. All these things are true. He says we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard. Least in any way we drift past them and slip away. The, Hebrew, the Greek word there is that you let them leak. You're a, you're a vessel. You understand what I'm saying? So everything they pour in you, the word of God, it fills you. He says, keep listening. Such that you don't leak. And then wake up one day and you have little faith. Or more fear than faith. You understand what I'm saying? Or more worry than faith. He says, be anxious for nothing. How possible is it to be anxious for nothing? Let me tell you how. If you remember that you're not of this world. He says he has given us the spirit. The spirit here we've received is not of bondage again to fear. The spirit you have is no longer of bondage again to fear. The spirit you have is of power, love, and what? Regardless of the circumstance, your mind is sound. You're established in his love. And his power works in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, regardless, you're not of this world. That's why he sent his word. Recently, I went back through scriptures. And for a moment, I asked myself a question. And I said, what if we went into the early church and got one of them saints in the early church and brought them to 2018? Many of those men would either appear false, cults, deceivers, or anything the world would call them. See, when the Bible says, do not forget the rock from which you were hewn, the rock from which you were cut, some of us forget where we came from. 
He says, look unto the rock from whence you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit from whence you are digged. You must understand from where you are cut. The Bible says your members of his body. Your members. You are members of his body. In the book of Acts, I'll give you an example of what I'm trying to talk about. A man was born by a woman. He had a father. He breathed oxygen like you and I. Raised in Tassa, Cilicia, which was no mean city. Brought up in the way of his fathers. He goes when he, at his teenage age under a man called Gamaliel. And Gamaliel starts to teach him the way of the fathers. That man persecutes the church and wastes it because he was zealous for the law of the fathers. On his way to Damascus to persecute. The church, he encounters a light. The Bible says that light appeared during midday. So it was midday and the, a bright light. So you can imagine how bright a light is when it is noon. You understand? And a man tells you at noon a bright light. Already the sun is at a, a bright mode. And on top of that, God says a bright light. And that man's life is changed. Scales fall off his eyes. And a wonderful apostle lays hands on him. And from that day the man starts to follow God. He's speaking the same words that I'm telling you today. And one day. As he's preaching the gospel. Persecutions come through. Turmoils come through. Trials of all manner come through. And in the book of Acts 28, there's a story. They had survived a shipwreck. They crossed over to the island of Melita. And the Bible tells us in verses 3, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on fire, a viper came. Blood. Oxygen. Lungs, nervous system. No more human being outside. And the Bible says, and a viper comes out of the fire and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hung on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom thou he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to leave. They're saying this man must have killed somebody. Because he has just survived sea. And after surviving sea, because vengeance escaped, suffereth a man not to leave. Look at a viper, it has clung on his hands. It's Paul! How you think about it? And it hits his hand. Boom. And the Bible says, he shook it off. And threw it in the fire. The Bible says, he felt. <laughs> he felt. He felt. No harm. This was a man who believed the same words that you sit on for on Thursday. The same words that I'm preaching tonight. Imagine a snake beat you right now. See, many of you say that excited, but you're not thinking about it. And I want you to think about it. Imagine a serpent. And they tell you, oh, actually the snake that has bitten you is the most poisonous snake on the face of the earth. 
What would be the first thing you do? <laughs> what would be the first thing that would come to your head? Think about it. Man, we need to grow in faith. Tell somebody we need to grow in faith. He shook it off. He shook it off. And felt no harm. And the next verse says, How be it? They looked when he should have swollen and fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and they saw no harm come to him. The Bible says they changed their mind. And they said that he was a God. <laughs> Praise God somebody. Think about it. Just, you know, before you even get excited, think that this is the same rock from which you are hewn. We read it every time in Mark 16. I think from about verse 15. He says, and he said unto them, Go ye, the Bible says, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't say to every person. Creature. He didn't say to every person. Creature. Creature. The Greek word there, creature is to every ordinance, every human being, and everything that is created by God or man. That's what he calls creature there. And the next verse says, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, the Bible says, shall be damned. And these signs, these signs, shall follow them that believe. He says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall spit new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if, 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 not when, it's not a deliberate, but he says, if they drink any, any, any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If, not when. You don't look for poison. No. But if they should poison you. If. The Bible says, it shall not hurt them. Give me the amplified of that. It says, they will pick up serpents and even if they drink anything deadly, the Bible says it will not hurt them. It will not. It will not. That's what's inside there. Tell somebody I'm not of this world. Say it again and tell them I'm not of this world. <laughs> my God, my God. My God, my God. My God, my God. Philip was a normal man. Born by normal parents. Went to normal schools. Ate food, digested it. He breathes oxygen. He gets to an Ethiopian eunuch. Preaches the gospel to him. Puts him in water. And by the time the man comes out of water, Philip is nowhere. Philip, 
I wish you understand what I'm trying to say. And the Bible says he was formed at Azotus. Literally, a man who had flesh and blood like you was carried by the spirit. And he was no more before the eyes of the eunuch. The question is, do you believe? And he was found at Azotus. Are you understanding? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? So even the miraculous, it is normal with us. Because it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? Recover. They'll take up serpents. He said. And the Bible says if they drink anything deadly, he says it will not help. And he says and they will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. That's how I know that everyone here has the ability to heal any sick. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because he said it. And he cannot lie. And here's the interesting part. The Bible says, in the next verse, after the Lord had spoken to them, Jesus had told them the signs that should follow them. The Bible says, he was received up in heaven, and the Bible says, he sat at the right hand. How many of you understand what I'm saying? The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I shall make thine enemies my footstool. The Lord God said to my God, Psalms 110 verse 1. He says, the Lord, Psalms 110 verse 1. He says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until thine enemies, I make thine enemies a footstool. Let me explain what happened. Somebody give me, give, give me a chair. Give, give me a chair. Let me show you. Let me demonstrate it. Uh, uh-huh. Give me a second one. I, I need to demonstrate with I, I, No, let's use this. It's all right. Let's use this. Now, this, you come and sit in the place of God. <clears throat> Smile. <clears throat> now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The Father God tells Jesus, sit thou at my right hand until, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. What are enemies? Poverty. What are enemies? Trouble. What are enemies? Sickness. What are your enemies? What are your enemies? He tells Jesus, sit at, on the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on the right hand till I make thine enemies your footstool. That means the essence of sitting on the right hand of the Father is simple. The guarantee that the moment Satan sees Jesus, seated on the right hand of the father it's like a prompting to Jesus to now before Jesus sat he says Papa God wait wait Fanero before I sit down Fanero these signs shall follow you you shall lay hands on no on the sick and they shall recover you shall handle serpents and they shall not harm you if you drink anything that is deadly it shall not hurt you go and preach the world go and preach to the gospel the whole world go preach the gospel are we good Let me see who is touching you. 
Let me see it kill you. Let me see who troubles you. Let me hear that disease kill you. Let me hear that person trouble you. I just want to hear when I'm seated on the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's what it means. That's what it means. Matthew 26, 64 calls it the right hand of power. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. He's not just seated watching you to die of HIV. No. He's seated saying, Okay, let me see it kill you. Until your enemies are made of what? <laughs> Woo. Come on, somebody shout. No, not like that. <laughs> somebody shout. You don't know what you're doing to hell. You, you don't know what you're doing to your finances. You don't know what you're doing to your health. You don't know what you're doing to your family. Scream! Hey! Hey! The devil is a liar. Until... That's the end of every believer. To finish well. I don't care what you've gone through. One time. You will look for the devil like this. (laughs) You'll have to lift your chair. To see how crushed he is. Do you believe it? Your kidneys will function in the mighty name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. He says, If, if you be reason with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Seek. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Where he sitteth is where you're supposed to seek. That's where your eyes are supposed to be. See everything defeated. (laughs) You're not of this world. He said, verse 2, set your affection. Now he has said it again. On things above, not things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You're dead. That's a good one. You're dead. Can cancer kill dead people? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Somebody say I'm not of this world. The Bible says when Christ reaches our life shall appear then you shall also appear with him in suffering how shall you appear with in glory somebody shout hallelujah 
Somebody shout hallelujah. So what, what? Ask your neighbor what? What? Uh uh-uh, uh, what? Did you understand what I'm saying? What? What 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 is troubling you? Praise God. Praise God forevermore. You're not under the power of Satan. You're not under the power of the testimony of this world. <laughs> Somebody say, I live in the realm of the God life. Woo! Say it again and say, I live in the realm of the God life. Because I am a child of God. I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. <laughs> hey! Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah again. Get to your feet. I'm not of this world. Hmm. Listen. I don't care what has happened in your life. I don't even give a damn. Because God has told you where to look. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have one. Tell your neighbor, you have won. Victory is yours. It is. It is. It is. How do I know? Because it doesn't lie. God never lies. He never lies. He never lies. He never lies. He never lies. lies. Tell any but God never lies. He is not a liar. He is not a man that he should lie. He is not. He's not. He's not. He's not. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to take minutes and talk like gods. Just take two, three minutes and talk like God. Everything you're speaking from now, you're going to say it as it is finished. Come on, somebody speak. Come on, somebody speak. Come on. You have one. 
but more than a conqueror through Christ which strengthens you that you're not of this world you're not born of this world and you'll not be put under the power of the evil the evil one only has control over people of the earth but you're not from this cosmos you're from the divine order Yo, from Zion, he says there is the beauty of all perfection. He says there, none shall say I'm sick. He says when the Lord shall appear in Zion, the Bible says he shall appear in glory. Not struggle, not strife. You'll not strive with men. You'll not strive with things of this world. The elements of this world will not touch you. The sicknesses of this world will not destroy you. They will not hurt you. The things that kill the men of this world will not kill you. Miracle signs and wonders will follow you. Men will look at you and say these were gods. Take it in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it like it's yours. Receive it in your spirit. And from today on, make up your mind not to look at anything of the earth. Set your sight on things above only where Christ is seated waiting for your enemies to be made a footstool in the mighty name of Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on.
Listen. The thing I just shared is the thing that stirs the anointing. Somebody receive it. Receive it! Receive it. We're not of this world. 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 Receive it. Receive it. Thank you, Lord. The anointing on your life. Woo! Holy Ghost. Miracles, signs, and wonders are going to follow you. <laughs> the lamb will walk, the blind will see. Power of the house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and everything I've shared does not apply to you, maybe because you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to come and receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible is clear that there is no name by which men can be saved. Save the name of Jesus. Whatever I've shared tonight is not beneficial to you if you're not in Christ. So I give you an extended arm right now to welcome you here and come and receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're there and you want to, you feel it in your heart, you say tonight, I want that life. Walk here right now and we lead you through a confession prayer. It's the best decision you could make, ever make in your life. Come. Come. sick in your body receive your healing now I don't care what name it carries and seal it right now that you are healed new creatures don't fall sick Three more. Come, 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 come. We will wait. Some of us can wait for you.
Wow. Wow. We can wait. For you we will wait. Shabrakata rabakura bakosa ndakoshe brakata bayi. Thank you, Jesus. Repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, the power of God is here. I feel him. Say, Jesus, tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for me. And you are raised from my glory. So tonight, I receive you. For the rest of my life, I give you my life. I give you my heart and everything there is. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.